Okay guys, welcome to this episode, which is about uh, polishing and doing the finishing work on slides. You know what these are, right? If you don't, oh, I'm still gloating over my slide case that we made in the secret project. Hey, look, that is a ham bone. Thank you, Mart Windu. All right, guys, in past episodes, I've shown you some things about slides. In fact, I'm going to give you a playlist right up there. See that eye popping up? Uh, don't click the eye in the middle of the episode. Wait till the end, but click on the eye anytime. And you'll go to an old episode or a couple that I've done about slides. But we're going to take this up to the next level now. Do you see how this looks? I mean, it functions. It's all okay. There's nothing rough, but I want to show you something. Ooh, see this? It's in a bag. That's because it's an Ian McQuee slide. And I think the bottles in Europe might be a little bit different than the ones we get over here. Maybe a little bit better quality or thicker. Not uh, so much of a seam. But I want you to notice the difference between this one and this one. You see how well that's polished, including this part up here, in comparison to this one? Now, like I said, I've shown you how to uh, take emery cloth and um, the belt sander and kind of get to this point. But the problem with this is the more you use this, especially when you're going down in here like this and out here, if you don't watch it at first when you're not paying attention, you start getting way down in here and you create all these scratches that are virtually impossible to make go away. So when you're doing this, as I've shown you in the beginning of this video here, you just kind of hold this at an angle like this and and do this and the same thing on the inside. And then you want to make sure that as much of this gets flattened out. If you see little shiny uh, sections in here, that's an indication that that's not um, sanded down well enough. But when you get it to this point, it's time to do something else. Now, that's what this episode is about, is about taking this to this or as close as we can get. I'm never going to get where Ian McQuee does. I mean, um, Catfish Keith uses his slide, so that speaks for itself. Now, the obvious thing to do here is that we would get finer and finer sandpaper, some wet, dry sandpaper, get away from this 120 uh, emery cloth and uh, even the 60 grit that I used to knock this down uh, to begin with. And then you start hopping up to 220 and then 400, 600, and you get all the way up to two and 3,000 grit, which is is what's really going to take this up but again this all involves you standing here for hours and wearing this down so um, if you want to do that if you're really bored if you're sheltering in place or something like that I guess that's okay but we're going to try to do something a little bit different we're going to automate this process and you know how we do that we do that with templates so you know around here I got templates for everything I got templates 
for a three string, how to put the strings, how to find the center, four string, how to mark off where um, the holes for your strings are gonna go in the tail piece. I'm a template person. We got templates to find where to cut the hole for a coffee can guitar. Scarf joint jig. This has been one of my most popular videos, by the way. But templates, yeah. That's what we do. Okay, so we're going to make a jig for this. In fact, a couple. So the first thing I want to tell you about is, I think you might have seen this before. You know what comes in every bottle of wine? Yeah, a cork or a screw top. So there's a ton of these laying around. So guess what? We'll go back in the top of a bottle of wine. Yeah, a cork. And so I've taken a couple of corks, taken a bolt, a nylon insert not I like those because they don't come loose and a couple of washers I've drilled a hole down the center of the cork so I can put it in the cork and then put it in a drill press and it will spin and once you get it leveled upright this is going to become very important so again it's just a cork with a bolt through it nylon washer with a couple or a nylon nut with a couple of washers and enough of the bolt sticking out to chuck up in a drill press. So that's the first thing you need to do. Really simple project. So the next piece of the puzzle is you're gonna need two pieces of neck wood or something like that. You want it to be wide enough where this will fit. See, there's a little bit sticking out. You want that. You don't want anything narrower than that, but you don't need anything that wide. So let's not waste wood. Two pieces of neck cut off are good. You want them to be about eight inches. Hey, metric hater, I did this one just for you. We're back in the 1400s now. But yeah, about eight inches or so. And you know I got to do it. Um, yeah, that is about 20 centimeters or 200 millimeters or 2,000 zillimeters or whatever you want to call it. But anyway. Let's go with this. The other one can be shorter. Now, you don't want them to be the same. You want this to bevel down. Why? Like this, doesn't this look like a school bus? I could have won the Pinewood Derby. Again, you know I have a car that's never been beaten a Pinewood Derby. I'll show it to you sometime. Anyway, you want to end up with something like this because I want to be able to clamp this but have this be taller. So we need to end up with this. So that's two pieces of wood. One of them cut at a 45, glued on here like so. This needs to be stable. You need to end up with that. You with me? Okay, next we're gonna need a piece of two-sided tape. Get some of this, it'll last you forever. And I'm gonna need a dowel or something round like that. And I'm also gonna need a clamp, which I borrowed off of my Scarf joint jig. I'm so proud of that, right? Even though I stole the idea from Darren Dukes. And uh, this clamp is a pony clamp. Saddle up my pony. Saddle up my black man. Yeah, so do not covet my pony clamp. That pony clamp is going to go right on there like so. Now, let me tell you about the dowel. I have measured here and found the center of this and I've come in off the end enough to do that you see that so now I'm going to drill a hole to accept a piece of this dowel and I'm going to start off like I always do with my awl tapping myself a little hole there and now I've got a drill bit that's about the same size as the dowel see that now I'm going to take this and drill down exactly that much. I'm going to take a little bit of glue here and um, open it. Yeah, brilliant. We'll put it in there like that. Yeah, that's good stuff. They also make hide glue, what's called H-I-D-E glue, and we're going to talk about that in another episode that's really going to excite you. Anyway, 
Got enough of that right there. See, I, I did that on purpose. I meant to do that. Anyway, I'm going to put that there. See, it's tight. I'm going to tap this down. Like so. Ooh. There must be an earthquake. Now we're going to end up cutting that off. Leaving about an inch or so sticking out. Like so. There we go. Sand that down a little bit. But we want to end up with that. See that nub sticking out? That's going to be able to stabilize this. And we're going to clamp this in. Now the exciting part. All right. We're going to make sure we don't get splinters off of there. There we go. All good. You see that? I'm going to set there, left, that like there. Now we're going to take a piece of that two-sided tape and hey remember mr sensitivity scissors uh yeah no uh they've been replaced by the new chick flick teal color and we're gonna put we're gonna cut a piece right there and we're gonna stick that right there oh look that's perfect does that shock you at all anyway then i'm gonna peel this off let's see how long this will take me to do this I'm gonna take a break here cut all right we're back a three hour tour anyway there we go get that corner to go down without sticking ourselves to it for eternity now one more time clamping area stabilization area sticky area check now I gotta show you something really amazing What's in here? I'm not going to do the secret episode thing to you again. These are sanding pads. Yeah. And look. What do we got here? Ooh, we got 400 grit. Got numerous ones. We got 1500 grit. And everybody's favorite. 2500. And are we going to outdo ourselves here with... Oh yeah, there it is. 3,000 grit. Look, this part can stick right onto here. So what are we going to do with that? Well, let me show you. Time to move the camera. We're at the drill press. Remember this gadget? And we're going to put this one on here. Now we're going to jam this in here. And it's probably going to wobble a little bit. Not like a, a she shimmy wobble. I want to get into that but we're going to put that right there and then we're going to tighten this up like so tighten that up good let's turn this on a little bit see how bad it wobbles see how much we're going to there that's going to be okay so guess what we're going to do now we're going to start out at 320 400, 600, 1,000, 1,500, 2,500, 3,500. In each one of these, we're going to sit here for about 10 minutes and go like this, right? Wrong. I'm going to have Mr. Invisible do that because I got some reading to do like, ooh, the Jazz Book Club 1961 version of Samuel Charter's The Country Blues. This is a book. That you should not covet, but try to get your own. This one come out of England for me. Anyway, I need to read this, and I'm going to have a Mr. Invisible do this work. So right about now, you're asking yourself, who's Mr. Invisible? How are we going to do that? Meet Mr. Invisible. Remember that? Oh, look, there's a hole right there in the middle of that that this mysteriously fits right down into. And, uh... I just turned this one way or another. Can you see what's going on there? Yeah, let's pull this down just a little bit. You see that? Oh, I want that to be straight. How's it going to be held straight? By Mr. Pony Clamp. That's right. So we squeeze this all the way open. Make sure that's right down in the middle there. Straighten it up the way we want. And look at that. Now, I just got to get my table in the right position and then I can take one of my fancy pads here like so and uh, this isn't the side we want to turn it over 
and I want to hold that right there, but I don't want to be here. So guess what? Yeah, Mr. Sticky Tape is going to do that for us. Check that out. Then I'm going to reach over. I'm going to wind up my table until it's just in contact with that. And then I'm going to lock the table down by tightening it up over here. And I'm going to turn this on and walk away. Alrighty then. Thank you, Mr. Invisible. I'm going to be seeing y'all in about 10 minutes. Oh, my. How time flies when you're working hard, right? All right, let's have a look. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Somebody might say, hey, you know what? What about the inside? You didn't get the inside. You know, I got to thinking about that. You know, if there was a piece of rod sticking up here and there was a piece in here, something like that, I could probably get that done. But that means I would have to cut this every time. Oh, well, what a hassle. Unless... I made another one just like this one with this thing up here with a piece of sticky tape on it right there. And then I just put that there like that. And then you could just slip the slide down in there like that. Chuck it back up. Oh, look at that. And clamp it back down like that. What do you know? All I got to do is flip the switch and I'm back to reading my book. Easy money. All right, guys. How was that for easy money? We got a wine bottle, a cork came in the wine bottle, a bolt, a nylon insert nut, a couple of washers, some neck wood cutoffs, a piece of dowel, and these fancy sponges held onto the scrap wood with two-sided tape. And it just frees you up for all kinds of other stuff. Now, I'm going to give you a link below to this set of pads right down below. So when you click like on your way down and subscribe if you haven't already and notify, um, there's a reason you want to be notified and I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, I'm going to give you a link to this. I also want to talk to you about a little bit about Ian McQuee. Forget making your own slides. You need one of these. I think the bottles wherever he lives, uh, they're thicker, their seams are, are less pronounced if there are any. And a polished job and this is awesome. I'm going to give you a link below to Ian. Um, and if Ian's slides are good enough for Catfish Keith, who I'll give you a link below. We've featured him before. But anyway, check that out. Uh, what else do I got here? Oh, not to forget our sponsor. Chick Flick Teal, that's right, Chick Flick Teal for all your painting needs. Um, yeah, and all the girls do not love Earl Loop Paste, just Chick Flick Teal. We are progressing and becoming more cultured on this channel. We start off with cigar box guitars, moved into coffee can guitars, that's moving up the chain, the Darwin chain there. And now we're on license plate guitars, and we're probably going to be moving into arch tops, old arch tops, junk arch tops. Watch for that one. But now I'm becoming your liter, literally literary, anyway, your source of good reading. This one, the country blues, we talked about that today. I was sitting on my butt while the drill press was doing the work, but hey, who cares? Samuel Charters wrote this book in 1959. It opened the doors and it opened our eyes to North Mississippi Hill Country Blues. Anyway. I'm going to give you a link below to try to get yourself a copy of this. Again, this was the Jazz Book Club version of it. This is kind of rare, and I like that. Okay, so what am I going to do with all the time I saved today? Well, I think, I'm since I live in California, I'm going to go to the beach. I'm ready to go to the beach, buddy. Um, but since I'm in California, I'm still under quarantine. So I guess, I guess, let, let me get this mask on. I don't want to expose anyone else to my whatever it is I have. Anyway, the beach is in my shed, 
And so, hey, I'm going to have a lot of fun here, buddy. See you next time.